All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this. Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Hot Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. What's in the box? Don't touch that! It's plutonium! P uh, plutonium? How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's... Mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times... Consequences could be... catastrophic? Whoa. Deja vu. Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc!
Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom. I it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap! I'm late! Dad, are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc's stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And, hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, ha. But really, can I? Nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> hey, Dad. Who's running this sale, anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly!
I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. Problem? Biff? He's got this... Thing, see, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. He found it first, but... Oh, well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look! It's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Uh, oh, uh, g gosh. Uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Wow, that was sizzling hot, like a melting ice cube. Hey, Dad. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Well, it's one for the monkey, two for the snow, three to get ready. Now go, Scat, go! Woo! I keep this picture of my dad to remind me that even the most hopeless losers can grow up to be pretty cool guys. Hey, Dad. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. 
but he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son, but the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Biff. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh... Not enough. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? I'll pay you for it. How much? Um... Not enough. Ah, uh, never mind. Seems kind of empty without the courthouse. Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> well, that smells like beef stew. Wait, I, I got one. Let's make some noise. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, Doc. Where are you? Doc? Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you?
Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Party. Ah! Party, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime, and that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past, or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you going to tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right. Last Time Departed. Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on. Come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? <laughs> Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. And by wrong hands, I mostly mean Biff. It's too bad you're not a bloodhound boy. Nah. Hmm. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Starbase Zero. I hope
hope Jimmy's fixed the wild gunman machine. I guess there's time for a quick game. Okay, now I'm ready. A1 liquor. I like the new bars Mr. Figgins put on the windows. Very secure. What do you think, I? What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? I don't think so. Step away from the door. Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on. Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Maybe not. Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Yeah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! What are these? My editorial trophies. Cat Lover's Quarterly. It's legitimate journalism. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on you! the... You! It's spelled with a U, you illiterate vandal! That tea's never gonna boil. Einstein brought me that shoe from the past, but when in the past? I can't leave now. Miss Strickland's my only hope of finding Doc.
I didn't even know they gave out trophies for best litter columnist. <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Oh, the candy looks older than I am. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Brown Mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Firm announces plans for Lone Pine Mall, Peabody Ranch to be rezoned for commercial development. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Yeah, oh, that's peculiar. The water still hasn't come to a boil. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, he wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist. Just like his father. If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Did you come all the way up here to chat, or are you just gonna poke around my apartment like your case in the joint? Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. The whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Hey, there's Jennifer's mom coming out of the market. Mrs. Parker? I find it curious that she always uses the same strapping red-headed bag boy. Don't you? If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Huh. Looks like the clock tower repairs have stalled out again. Oh, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but exceedingly fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. 
Okay. If there's a clue to find a dock out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. That tea's never gonna boil. Marshal Strickland. My grandfather, gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. I can't leave now. Miss Strickland's my only hope of finding Doc. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? Nothing. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history, my Aunt Fanny. Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that? Chip Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Don't let me keep you from your business.
would you mind if I stepped out for a minute? I, I just remembered a video I've got to return. Do you have to go? I get so few visitors these days. But... And I'd hate to have to tell my brother, your vice principal in charge of discipline, how rude you were to me. <laughs> Especially with graduation coming up and all. I guess I'm stuck here for a while. That tea's never gonna boil. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! Clint Eastwood plunges to death on runaway train. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. October 28th, 1985. Authorities still mystified by Maul's shootout. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. October 28th, 1985. Authorities still mystified by Maul's shootout. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Oh, that candy looks older than I am. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. I'm not leaving until I find Doc somewhere in those newspapers. I told you not to touch those! Excuse me, Miss Strickland. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. Following year, as I recall. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. 
Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? It's, uh, my uniform. Uh, didn't I tell you? I, uh, I got a job. At the Model T factory? Yeah. Uh, n no. Never mind. You don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? I've got to turn on the time circuits first. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc.
Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Young man? Excuse me, young man? Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl, wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Ask him where I can get the address. Ah, I see! Because you want to blast it to smithereens, just like Carl Sagan did. With public-spirited citizens like you around, the lawless element will be on the run in no time. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Sonny Crockett. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Crockett. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, bum!
I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. Where is the jail in 1931 anyway? Hey, how you doing, Einie? Hey, how you doing, Einie? I can sightsee later. Right now, I've got to find the dock. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. Majestic Arms. Transients welcome. I can sightsee later. Right now I've got to find the dock. Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. 
The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Where is the jail in 1931 anyway? Psst, Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. 
You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to... Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Brown results. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Young Doc's in the courthouse. I hope I'll be able to recognize him. Not sure what that... mess up my picture of dad like that. Not sure what that... Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, um, uh, Sonny Crockett. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2, A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? No, 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 why am I mis- See here. Or do we take H to stand for Termidian line operator? Later, Flutter Mac, 
There's age to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, my boy. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Crockett, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Or do we take H as Stanford Hermitian line operator? But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value. But only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Mm. Now if will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? Uh, what do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before 8, my Pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Emmett, uh, about don't your... Don't say it. H stands for one, the one dimension. No harmonic cost. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? 
Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Man, young Doc mumbles even more than old Doc. Not sure what that... Psst, Doc! Marty, have you found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Great! And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Blast! If only I could hear him myself. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass if acceleration is reduced by the... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. 
The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Emmett, uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Not sure what that... Or do we take H to stand for the Hermitian line operator? Well, in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that, <laughs> is that even possible? Mm, now, oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. H stands for one, the one dimension. Oh, well, no, 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 H. I'm sorry, I'm We're going to be the inverse. Inverse, inverse, inverse. Oh, yes, inverse, 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 inverse. Oh, no, 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 no. Not possible. No. for one, the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, then naturally H to the A multiplied by Doc will flip when he hears his own voice. Psst, Doc! Morty! How goes the escape plan? So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Uh, Good oh. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. What was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how much... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! Ha <laughs> ha! That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. 
I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done. I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen! Hey, I Notification from Achievements. Achievement unlocked 10. Hello, young friend talked Emmett into completing the rocket drill. Go to the guide to open space. Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Duck! I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that! That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Your younger self needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Oh, that could be a problem. I know. We're both underage. Underage? Nothing. It's 1931 and alcohol's been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia.
What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna, the etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk, anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about Wait, it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Hang in there, Doc. A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids' goons aren't gonna let us do an experiment on their barrels. No, oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. Obviously, this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. 
Indeed. This must be some sort of front meant to cleverly and legally obfuscate the existence of a hidden establishment of ill repute. Perhaps in the basement. Right. That might explain the elevator. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. <laughs>